Hi, once again, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. Let's do a mini build today. I'm going to be building in this Fractal Meshify 2 Nano. This is obviously the, the white version. This is a, a nice little case for what it is by Fractal. Got your typical Fractal front mesh panel here. I did another video on a Fractal Meshify case on an ATX build. I'll link you to that, but this is the nano version of that. Uh, smaller version of it. Uh, very heavy case right off the bat. I'll tell you that right now with no parts in it. It is, it is uh, pretty heavy and it's got, of course, once again, everything's metal on this except for this front panel mesh here. Perfect. You got your bottom filter here where your for your power supply of your connectors in the front you got a couple of USB 3's type C there and your audio connectors power button reset button let's go ahead and open this up this just pops off just like that no problem plenty of room in this case for for what it is for a micro build it's uh, Designed really well, really is. Comes with a 140 millimeter fan in the front and a 120 millimeter fan in the back, and it's got this nice little flume here that directs the air from this front fan up into your components to help keep them cool. Believe it or not, this case supports 280 millimeter front radiator for your water cool or it supports a 240 millimeter top radiator for water cool and if you want to do one in the back you could do a single rad 120 is what it supports 165 millimeters in length for your power supply under this shroud with the tray you can remove there's a hard drive tray in there you can remove that if and you can fit a 200 millimeter power supply in there max gpu length which is pretty surprising 306 millimeters if you want to remove the fan it can support a little bit more in length and your cpu cooler max height is 167 millimeters but we're going to build in this i'm going to show you what we're going to build in with it we'll come back to this case we'll we'll take a closer look at it but let me show you what we're going to put in it we've got the uh asus mag b560i this is a mini itx so this is going to be an Intel build. Nice little small board there. We're going to go with the 11th Gen i7 11700F for the processor. And we're going to go with the Zotac GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. Now this isn't meant for heavy gaming or anything, although this will do some nice gaming. This is more for, for actually watching 4K videos mainly and basic computing. But this is what the customer kind of asked for, so kind of building around that. This is a two-fan card here, so it's, it's short, so no problem with that fitting in the case. Just your basic Vengeance 32 gigs, 3200 megahertz DDR4 memory, and a 2 terabyte 980 Pro Samsung NVMe drive. We're going to use this 750 watt EVGA power supply right there and we're going to do the pure rock 2 be quiet cooler air cooler for this build so that's what we're going to be using as usual we're going to do an out of the box boot to make sure all the parts are okay assemble it and then we'll uh we'll get going on this build all right let's go ahead and get this out of the box look at that pretty cool huh Lock it down, off comes the cap. Put it on this side. Clickety-click. Good, good, good. Under here is where your M.2 is going to go. 
but conveniently they've added one on the back too. So you have two M.2s theoretically. Pretty cool. Yeah, they're captive. There we go. Now I'll get my cooler fan on here and get the power supply hooked up and we're going to get the video card installed and we're going to test boot this guy. Jump start this bad boy. Let's see if we can get a post going. I believe the jumper is right over here. Here we go. The lights. We've got some troubleshooting lights here. We're on yellow. And there we have it. We have a post and a BIOS. 37C for the CPU temp. That's all looking good. Now that we know all of our parts are in good shape, let's put these babies in the case. Okay, let's start off by taking this back side panel off of this case. Opens up very easy. On this meshified 2 Nano, kind of see how they got their cable management going here. Here's all your front panel cables. I'll go ahead and just untie them. There are front panel cables right there. USB 3, Type-C buttons, and the audio that sit there. Got our hardware box. Okay. Yep, some zip ties, washers, motherboard screws, all that good stuff. You can see some more, some more places to run your cables. Very good by Fractal doing that. There's one thing that I really uh, that I've already noticed here. By the time I mount this motherboard, look at that little space right there. They're giving me to route my CPU power cable. That right there is not very big at all. So I think I'm going to go ahead and route that cable in there before I mount this board. It's got me like that before. Wow, that's a really small hole to feed your power cables through. Wow. Well, that barely, barely, but it does fit. Okay, got that. Cool. Now you see I got that. Now let's get the motherboard in there. Not only should you run that cable up through there, you should go ahead and plug it in also because you're not going to have any room at all. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug the CPU cables in. Fits nicely. It looks like the cooler definitely clears the lid, so we're in good shape there. Let's go ahead and get these motherboard screws in here and get, get that sucker mounted. Okay, now one thing I have to be careful of, and I noticed is it's different with these minis, these mini motherboards. Some of the places where some of your headers are, are kind of moved around. Usually your front panel stuff is over here. Well, and on this mini, the front panel is right here. I'm going to have to get the front panel cables connected to that before I put in the video card. If you see here, right down here is where my front panels are. Cables. <laughs> so my plan is to run them flat down against the board here and underneath the video card right where my finger is right there. That is my plan. There's a gap in all video cards right about that spot. So that's how I plan on routing that. Another thing you got to keep in mind with these mini motherboards is there is only there's a CPU fan header then there is a pump fan header and there is a system chassis fan header one system chassis fan header and guess where it is right back here so you got to keep all that in mind if you plan on adding fans and you don't have a water cool setup you may have to buy an adapter for your power supply, for SATA to what, a four pin like this, or a three pin or whatever, to run that to. In this case, I'm gonna try a splitter on the, on the chassis fan to see if I'm happy with how those fans are spinning up. But I'm gonna go ahead and hook up these other two, these, these USB three and the type C, just cause while I still have some room around here, you know what I mean, to 
to work with. Let's go ahead and get the power supply installed, shall we? Power supply is in. Tight squeeze, man. They're always on these small cases, right? I mean, with minis. If we can get that video card in there. So I've already pulled through my, my video card power. So let's see if I can go ahead and get the video card in here. Fine, okay. It's looking pretty good. Actually, it's looking very good. That worked out quite well, I must say. That worked out quite well. I've got everything hooked up. I've got some more wire management to do, obviously. Um, I've got I've got the fans on a splitter that's hooked into the chassis fan, and I want to see how pleased I am with this with the RPMs of these fans because in a small case like this, it's just extremely important to get the best kind of airflow you possibly can. So we're going to fire this thing up and I am going to determine whether I need to do something different with the, with the cooling fans. Um, I need to pull some of these wires down too, but let me fire it up. We'll test it. Not too bad, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead, button these cables up and get this all buttoned up, get windows installed and we'll call this a job done. I'm running OCCT here, doing a stabilization test, stress tested the processor 100%. For 10 minutes or so, stress tested the GPU, 10 minutes or so. Final result for this Meshify Nano case is the processor reached a maximum temp of 76C. That's at 100% load for about 10 minutes. It's really, really not bad. I mean, right now it's sitting at 41C, so, and it was as low as 36. So under load, 76C in this small, compact nano case tells me that uh yeah temperatures are going to be just fine they're just they're not even going to be gaming or even rendering on this computer uh, however if they had a grandson or somebody else who come in and wanted a game i have quite confident that they would be able to uh, so we're looking at the the gpu side of things yeah the, the gpu temps never got above like 76 whenever i stress tested that so and while i was stress testing the gpu because i know that the chassis would heat up if we look here look here at the system temperatures the lowest has been is 44 right now it's at 50 that's because i've been pushing it but it got high as 58 c that's not bad. Like I say, stress tested it, pushed it, checked out the temperatures. I say we're good to go on this machine. And just to show you a bit of the wire management done on the back side here. Yeah, you got the straps, your Velcro straps, might as well use them, right? Not too bad, nothing fancy. Doesn't need to be. This is the final result of the wire management. The inside of the case, pretty clean. I'm really starting to really like this, this build here. Here comes my favorite part. Nice. Awesome. And just like typical cases with the fractal meshify cases, front the front mesh door swings open. That allows you to clean the filter. Here's your filter here. So that's pretty convenient. So a nice, fresh, clean look. I'm liking this little guy here. Nice little uh, nano build case, I'd call it. It's a, it's a nano build, a, it's a mini build. Kind of a little bigger than a normal mini, but it's still considered a mini build here. So turned out pretty nice. So I would definitely recommend building in this case. I have links to all these parts down in the description below this video. Please use my links, help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for coming along with me on this build. I quite enjoyed it, turned out well. Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. See you soon.